Listen, in any given week, I try my best to give myself a day where I focus on myself, where I pour into myself, where I'm making sure I'm good mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. But a lot of times, that's not something that people can do. A lot of times, that's not something that people intentionally do is what I should say. And if you keep pouring into other people and not yourself, you'll deplete yourself. That's why we're so excited that this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. With therapy as a tool, you're able to figure out how to balance the two, how to be able to give to yourself. Because if you're like me, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I am a friend, I am a sister, I am a daughter. So there are a lot of people that I care about that I want to be able to give into. However, if I am just drained, if I'm burnt out, How's that good for anybody? So using therapy as a tool to help you figure out that balance. I have a therapist that I go to every single week. Um, and she is able to help me not only focus on my goals, but also help me figure out how to do the things that I do love, which is giving to the people I love. Listen, if you're thinking about starting better help or if you think about starting therapy, but give better help a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient to be to be able to work in your schedule, to be affordable as well. And what's so great is that if you take the, the questionnaire, they'll put you with a licensed therapist. And if that therapist and you don't, if you don't feel like it gels well, you can switch therapists at any time at no additional cost. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash argue. Argue. Today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash argue. Argue. What's up, everybody? What's happening, family? And welcome back to another episode of Is, is This, this Gonna, gonna cause, cause an argument? argument? My name is Angel Lakita Moore, also known as Angel Tanksley, also known as That Chick Angel. One margarita angel. I'm open my legs, okay? Because uh, a chick is out here top charting, touring, doing all the things. But I'm joined by the sexy, the ever just so elegant, the ever gentleman. Hmm, the reason why I drank these margaritas. <laughs> My other host, tell them who you are, baby. I'm the other host of this is going to cause an argument. Marcus Tanksley, a.k.a. Tank, a.k.a. Plates, even though they ain't up on there this week. Um, <laughs> hey, if it's your first time tuning in, it's a podcast we do every single goddamn week. And we talk about pretty much anything we feel like it. But a lot of times we talk about uh, family Mm -hmm. kids, parenthood, love, current events. Every now and then we might hit on some politics, but for the most part is what we want to talk about. Anyway, we do the podcast to do it every week. So if it's your first time tuning in, thank you for tuning in. If you're back, thank you for coming back. And if it's your first time, I don't know what you was doing before now, but welcome. Hey, and we also are joined by sponsors. You yes. already heard about one. Yes, you heard about BetterHelp. We're also going to be joined later on in the podcast by ZocDoc and Honey. These are companies that decided they wanted to partner with our podcast so that we could tell our audience about their products. So when you hear about these products, if they offer a service or a product that you have been interested in trying, please use our, our URL code, uh, our uh, promo code to be able to one, get a discount and also let these sponsors know that, Hey, we sent y'all there because when you do that, you actually are helping out this podcast. So we greatly appreciate it already. Hey, and we are also joined by some amazing people that we call our media family, okay? Yes. That is Patreon. Hi. Okay, they on here watching us live. They watch the comments are rolling in. They complimenting Angel on her hair and stuff oh, and Jesus outfit. Oh, this is so dirty. And, uh, <laughs> Thank you, though. And they join us every week. They join us uh, when we ain't shooting. They join us to get early contact and early uh, access to contact. things that we do. Yeah, contact. There they get go. contact to us, all right? <laughs> yes, they do. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, that uh, media family is from Patreon, okay? All you got to do is go to patreon.com slash that chick angel to sign up for the low, low of $5 a month. You can be a part of that media family. If you're here watching, you're already family, but that's the media family. Yes. Uh, some perks I just want to mention about our Patreon. One, because I'm so excited, because after this podcast, we're going to be letting them know what our tentative dates are for the rest of the tour, because mm -hmm. we have our dates. And I say tentative because we are locking in all the venues, and once I have that email that they're all locked in, it's game over, baby. Um, also, our Patreon are able to do the special segments that we do on our tour, where they actually get to come up on stage with us, and we right. get to learn more about them, and it's mm -hmm. fun segments. Very it's not interactive. Like, yeah, it's really, really fun. It's hysterical. Our Patreon are the only people that that is even open to. Also, Mama Likes has a new product that just came in from my manufacturer. It came in right before we left for ABFF. 
uh, later on today or later on this week. I plan on going live with them to show them the product so they'll be aware. Also, when Mama Likes drops that box, guess who's getting it first? Patreon. So uh, these are the things. And also, let us tell it. Marcus's other yeah, podcast other now podcasts, goes live with goes Patreon. Live with Patreon. Today we filming right after this episode. So, so stick, stay, stay here. You get exclusive access for the five dollars. Okay, it's it's just what it is. <laughs> Period. Uh I'm so uh, for some reason I'm really excited about today's podcast. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I think it's because we now have dates with her. I don't know. I'm just excited. I'm glad to be here. Glad to be in the number. Um, we have an interesting um list of segments today that I'm excited about. One that we were supposed to listen to before we got here oh, we today. Didn't. And we didn't. So you will be getting our honest reaction. Actually, with uh, something that Bree didn't put in our um, outline that I still want to do, even though it's not in the outline, is in my feelings. Let me tell you what's got me in my feelings. I got something making me feel good. In my feelings is a segment that we have done many, 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 many a time. It's yeah. our first and original segment right. that uh, we ever added to the podcast. Is it wasn't in the original lineup, but I kind of like to always have a in my feelings or Tanksley Pride in here, regardless of what else. Yeah. Um, because I feel like I have so many things that have me all emotionally all over the place. So I'll start since I sprung this up on you, and then you all can right, figure so out. Yeah, handle your business. What's got me um, feeling good is that I just came back from the American Black Film Festival, which was held in Miami, Florida. This is their 27th year. This festival, I actually know the two people who created it, Jeff Friday. Well, I don't know Jeff. I got to meet him. But Nicole Friday, I uh, got to meet in person prior to now, and she hand-selected me to be one of the social media ambassadors this year. So they flew me out. Uh, and me and Marcus both attended a lot of the screenings and everything. It's so amazing to watch what black folk will create even when no one is backing them in a way that is like what we're used to. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like when we think of a Steven Spielberg, when he has an idea, people want to be on board, okay? Um, but when you just Joe just Schmo. from the name alone. Yeah, but when you just Joe Schmo, you got to have a lot of grit. You got to have a lot of perseverance. You got to have a lot of determination in order to get your ideas seen and to come to uh, fruition. So going to ABFF, while you do get the the Hollywood stars, all the glitz and glamour, I got to meet John Boyega. Uh, I posted in one of my reels. Me and him took a, a picture together. That if you don't know who he is, he is black a, Star Wars dude. Yes, he was the first black stormtrooper. He's in the new movie they cloned Tyrone with Jamie Foxx and Tiana Paris. Stormtrooper, ain't that what they called on Star Wars? The dudes in the white. That's what he I was a pilot. He's in Star Wars. He's in Star Wars. My bad. Go ahead. I... Um, they had Taraji P Henson there. They had Daniel Brooks there. They had big stars there, right? Well, that's great. You also get to see, and this is what I said on the red carpet. While it's beautiful to see these big films, we get to see what people are willing to partner with. It's mm -hmm. also nice to see what we want to make without the permission of other people. And that's what I feel like you get with independent films. You get to see what black people want to create without the noise and the, the perceptions and the permission of other people, whether it be white, black, brown, whoever. It's just what we want to create. So that was also really beautiful. And they had the deck stacked. We also got to see our good friends and spend time with them, Tab and Chance and Katara and Carlos um, Coleman. Good friend Quinn Walters were there. We got to meet her uh, friend, Ashley Rios, who was a star of one of the films, the independent films that um, went up. Chris Spencer has a new special coming out. And he is phenomenal. If y'all know who Chris Spencer is, any comedian that you've enjoyed, their special, Chris yeah. Spencer has been behind the special. He's had something to do with it. Whether it be producing, directing, punching up the jokes, Chris Spencer is com black comedy royalty. He's comedy royalty in general. He just is not like one of the big stars that people are used yeah. to like. No, if you go back and watch it, damn near anybody special. I don't care who it is. And if you look through those credits, you're going to see Chris Spencer somewhere. Yeah. In that, uh, in those credits, 
Um, oh yeah, Gabrielle Union was there. Oh, our friends Tommy and Cody yeah, Tommy Oliver. Cody. Mm -hmm. They uh, this is their biggest budget feature film that they had premiere at ABFF. So it was just not only was it great just to be around all that black creativity, it was also dope. Uh, just meeting people who have become either admirers or fans of my work, both online and on screen. Me and Marcus were stopped numerous times, not just by, like I expect for my voice to resonate with other wives and other mothers. I don't always expect my creativity to resonate with other creatives and to meet a lot of people who are also creatives that work in the industry to be like, yo, um, I really love your work. I've loved watching your rise. There was a couple of times, two women almost got me. They they almost got me emotional. And I was like, you better hold it together, Angel. Mm. But to hear people say that I am an inspiration to them, and I've yeah. heard it before. The people that you look forward to seeing. Yeah. It's just like, wait, no, I'm here to see you. What you right. You, ain't, you, ain't, you don't know me. Yeah. I know you. It was crazy. Tell yeah. tell us about your experience with ABFF. Um, I ain't got too much to add to that. It was it was a dope time. It's all it's still uh well, Angel's experiencing something different too by just being recognized by so many different people. But it's this you know, different for me just to go and be in these different venues and in these different uh rooms with all these people. And again, like a lot of times and this happens more than once they'll see me and look for Angel. People don't just naturally approach me for some reason. Mm -hmm. Even on the plane, uh, some actually, he just DM'd me. I need to respond to him. He was like, he, me and Angel didn't fly back on the same flight. We didn't fly there on the same flight, yeah, and we, we didn't two, fly back. Uh, two different flights, and I sat down. I come on, and it's already, I'm in the middle of the seat, you know, unfortunately. But I sat down, and the guy beside uh, to my right is like, looks at the woman to my left and was like, are you Angel? And she looks, she has her headphones on. She'd say, she looks, she was like, uh, no. He's like, oh, okay, I thought I recognized y'all. Now, they've already been sitting there for, I think they came <laughs> on with either military or mm -hmm. first class or something. I don't know. They was already sitting there. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm Angel's husband. He was like, oh, which, that was one of the weirdest things I've ever been like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't acknowledge me, just go straight to her because you think it's Angel. But anyway, it was a, uh, yeah, it's just being, being in these areas, um, Seeing the screenings, like Angel said, uh, seeing all the things that black folk are doing with little to nothing compared to our counterparts. Yeah. Have the world as their oyster and what we are able to create out of nothing. Yeah. You know, granted, it it, 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 it truly is. Um, it's, I enjoy seeing it. I do. I love it. I love every little bit of it. Um, but yeah, being there, um, you know, I have a little tiff with Miami itself, but I'll talk about that on the other half of it, my feelings. <laughs> uh, but no, it was dope. I, I definitely look forward to even like we were, the idea of going to Essence was thrown in Angel's head again. And I was just like, that was also a dope experience. Essence was uh, just, great. Just making, as far as me and Angel going, making something out of nothing. Granted, yeah. we're not going as nothing, but. Yeah. If if we do end up doing that, but yeah, no, the uh, ABFF was dope. It's fire. Uh, seeing all, even the atmosphere, like all these beautiful black folk. Mm -hmm. It's like the the last party we went to. It was so crowded and so crunk, and you ain't got to worry about no foolishness whatsoever. Yeah, you know that was one of those times where I'm always on on the lookout. Like, all right, it was about to pop off. There's no trigger. There's nothing that hits that spidey sense for me of. What might mess around and pop off because you did the energy in the room. You can tell there ain't no foolishness about to happen in that room. No, people are just happy to be there. Yeah, people are happy for what has been created by a, a Jeff and Nicole Friday, and they're just happy to um to network and mingle. Even the pool party we went to. That's what I was about to say. The pool party. Black people are fine as hell. Mm -hmm. You, mean, I, I ended up getting in the pool to go around to the bar. Right, this white lady stopped me. They ain't got nothing to do with this event. They just seeing all these black folks. So she's, because I'm in the pool. Of course, ain't no black people in the pool. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I just wanted to make me a shortcut so I could get to the bar. And so she's like, excuse me. So she's like pointing and asking who random people are. I'm lying to her at this point because I'm like, lady, just leave me alone so I can go get my drink. She was like, and everyone is so gorgeous. And I was like, we do be. We do be pretty. We do be. We we be some pretty ass folk. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, "Oh my god, it just everyone is just so beautiful." I'm like, "Right." 
right? Yeah, and to go over and sit in the sun like you was doing. I'm going <laughs> to get my drink. But, no, it was dope. Um, before I go into what's got me feeling some type of way, I want to tell you all what had me feeling type of way was this uh, strained muscle in my groin, okay? And you should have seen me because I'm just like y'all. I was on that dag on social media trying to figure out what the hell <laughs> happened. Going down a rabbit hole like, okay, so it clicked. So was that a tear in my groin? What happened? Am I going to need surgery? Am I never going to be able to twerk the way I want to be able to twerk, right? And I don't know why me at my big age would go on social media to find the answer. Because what I do know is there are a lot of people with big voices that are not prof uh, medical professionals that should not be trusted, okay? Because <laughs> there's even some medical professionals online that you shouldn't trust, okay? Especially not random people on the internet. Well, what I decided to do instead of <laughs> just trusting the people on the internet after I had to get my brain together is to use ZocDoc. OK, because with ZocDoc, not only is it free, OK, it's an app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance and are available when you need them and tr treat almost every condition on under the sun. Now, listen, I know what it's like to have the difficulty of finding a doctor. As long as we've lived in California, Marcus and I have always had a problem just settling on a primary care physician because we have very strong point of views on how we want medicine to be used in our life, how we want to collaborate with doctors on our health. And prior to ZocDoc, it felt like that search was going to be endless and that search was never going to come to a place where we felt comfortable with the person that we decided to partner with with our health. Well, with ZocDoc, that worry is no longer a case for both of us. We know that based off of the patient reviews, we can find a doctor that one has the type of bedside manner that we want. Two, we have insurance that we pay for. I'm not wasting that insurance on going with a doctor that's not in my network because you know why? They're going to charge me up the wazoo. So being able to go on to ZocDoc and find someone who has the insurance or takes the insurance that we have. Because I remember when I was trying to get um, birth control after Amar and it became a real issue trying to find a place that carried the type of birth control that I wanted that was in network because my insurance was about to charge me so much money. And then last but not least, being able to find someone that can work in our schedule. Our schedule is not the most, um, what do you want to call it, the routine. So being able to find someone that can actually fit us in when we need them is probably really the top of our list of things that we need. ZocDoc also makes it so that we can find someone who can see us in the actual month and year that we need to see them in. So... This is what we want you to do. Go to ZocDoc.com slash argue. Argue. And download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash argue. Argue. ZocDoc.com slash argue. Argue. Um, so real quick, what's got me feeling some type of way? Essence Festival. Okay, mm. I want to go. I went last year. I went last year just to experience it. I experienced it with Marcus. It was great. We fell in love with New Orleans. Um, really found out that my demographic of people that my content resonates with, they be at essence, okay? Um, had a great time last year. This year, I really want to go to Essence to work, not just to experience Essence. While that's great, it's fine and dandy, I really want to be able to go to work. And I told my brand manager that, and so he's been trying to put out fillers, but, like, for real, these brands are playing me. I'm like, why? They should be feeling toward, I was going to say her, but us. I'm going to go ahead and say us. <laughs> I I mean, you can, you can have the us. I'm like, where we, I think we could go together. I also know I should be able to go by myself. I'm on yeah. a goddamn on HBO show right now. Yeah. And I'm like. <sighs> you a rapper. And I have a hit song. It uh, so far has peaked at number seven on iTunes. I'm in the top ten of all U.S. hip-hop rap songs. I have a Billboard. It's on Billboard. Okay, rap song. You've been on Billboards. I've actually been on actual physical Billboards. Um, Chili's then quote uh, tweeted the um, lyrics from the song. Mac Cosmetics 
has tweeted lyrics from the song. Mm -hmm. Lyft has tweeted lyrics from the song. These are major billion dollar corporations. Well, yeah, I, I would say I think all of yeah. them are that are like they have been touched by the song. So I'm like, I don't understand. And I'm not trying to go just on their dime just to chill. I'm actually trying to work. I'm like, I'm a great brand ambassador. Yeah. And I would think just from here's the thing alone, like how many, granted there are definitely, you know, more successful podcasts, but that podcast resonates with like probably 80% of the people at Essence. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Kevin and Melissa got asked to go, but yeah. also they're New York Times that's bestsellers. Not, yeah, yeah, that's not, here's the thing. Yeah, 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 here's yeah. the thing. Yeah, so, like, I understand why they have been asked. So this is outside of, oh, this I know this person has been asked, this person. I'm not even thinking about those people. Yeah. I'm thinking about me. And what's crazy is brands have reached out to me, like, if you're there, we would love for you to stop by. How about you'll know I'm there if you bring me? It's real simple. And let me tell you, I make sure these brands get their money's worth. Like, there are people who get paid guap and barely do anything. I literally come up with creative brand ideas. There's one that I can't tell y'all I'm about to do. I did come up with it very fast, but that is also how I work creatively. I can usually come up with a concept really fast, really strong, and it, it blends in with my own voice so it doesn't feel so foreign to my listeners or my followers. So I be, I'm like, and I'm personable. So when people come to your booth or come to your um, what is not, it's activation, they're going to have a good time. They're going to have a good experience with me in connection to your brand. So anyways, it's got me feeling some type of way because I'm like, I feel like I've proven myself. And I get it. There are tons of black influencers that have millions upon millions of followers more than I do. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about I got that conversion rate, okay? That's what I'm talking about. So anyways, that's got me feeling some type of way. What's got you feeling some type of way, baby? Uh, look, a lot of people love Miami. <laughs> I like Miami. I loved it. Um, this is my thing. There are certain things when you're traveling out of the country, mm -hmm. and you're on an island or something like that. Mm -hmm. There are certain things that you look past because you realize where you are. I feel like if I'm going to feel like I'm in another country, I would rather just be in another country. Uh huh. Like, get me stamp my passport to get there. <laughs> That's what yeah. I feel like in Miami. <laughs> yes. I don't know what it was, but like me and Angel, we love traveling up and down that Caribbean and that whole island chain right there we absolutely love it because it'd be beautiful and that's what miami felt like it felt just like it felt like just like that but the u.s currency was the u.s currency there <laughs> you know what i'm saying Come and, on. and that was this my whole feel the whole time uh it like it be raining like it do with the on them islands it it'd be would, hot it was so hot and rain it'd just be just a downpour of rain it was it was <laughs> i was sweating it wasn't even hot at one point in time. It was don't we were, No, we were eating. sitting under a, ca a canopy eating, just talking. Water was running down my face and body, and I was not even hot. <laughs> we were eating, and sweat just started to pour. It was, <clears throat> excuse me, it was so freaking hot. I was like, I don't understand. Yeah, but one thing was, was great, because a lot of stuff was in close proximity, is we used to L.A. prices when it comes to, like, Uber and stuff. Mm -hmm. And everywhere that I Ubered. Uber Lux, Uber Black, SUV, everywhere, because it was so much cheaper than it is. It would have been $800 per ride out here in California. Listen, yes, per. In Miami, I was like, oh, let me go down to this extreme premium. Pow. Send it. Every time they pull up, uh, who else? Just me. Yeah. <laughs> Just me. I mean, we know Florida has humid weather. Miami this week, was a, it felt it was different. It was like, I've been to Florida several yeah, times, Florida not Miami times. per se. Look, we said we just went to Louisiana. Ain't nothing more humid than Louisiana. Come on, but Miami put it. But Miami it, it, was like, whew, what? It said, let me hold my drink. Yeah, in Louisiana, the buildings sweat. <laughs> Literally, every building you walk past, the windows, the walls be sweating because it's so humid outside. And on the inside, it's just like, oh, we got to keep it cold. But, uh, no, I enjoyed it. Florida was dope. Um, I ain't got too much other to say than, yeah, it just felt like I was in a different country. Yeah, it was just hot. It was hot. It was very hot. Okay, we're going to do oh, what? real quick. Yeah. That's where I feel like I was in a different country and I didn't appreciate. It felt like the same song played 
the entire time we were there. Oh, there's such a, uh, a Latin influence yes. in Miami. So that dun, dun, that's one dun, thing I'm willing dun, to look dun, past. Dun, I, I, dun, I ignore dun, it dun. when I'm out of country. I don't want to have to experience that when I <laughs> it's like it sounds like the same song over and over at every single restaurant. Cars going down the road, the same song was playing. Yeah, very. There's the, the listen and it loud. They're like, you want to hear some American <laughs> music? Go somewhere else. It wasn't that bad when I was in Cuba. I know a lot of them people are Cuban. Oh, <laughs> we was in like, Cuba. And it wasn't that bad. I was like, yeah, dang. This, they, is this yeah. the same song? It, they next song. It sounded like the same doom, song. Doom, <laughs> doom, doom, doom. It was crazy. It was crazy. Okay, let's go to our next segment, which is TikTok O'Clock. Angel, girl, what time is it? TikTok O'Clock. This is the segment that me and Marcus have not heard yet. Hold on, let me turn down everything else on my computer. Um, okay, everything looks like it's muted so that I can uh turn up this specific clip. All right, uh, this is about sibling love. One moment. It is mandatory for my children to know that your sibling is the most important person. Your sibling is your best friend. Your sibling is your gift from God. Your sibling is a person that is there to do life with at this juncture in your life, at this journey, you know, this person is here for you. This is a gift for you. Your sibling is everything. Make sure you do that in your family too. Don't allow toxicity in your household. Don't allow, as mom and dad, it is very important because you're the head. You are the head of the household, which means you are the leaders. So you cannot allow your children to fight with each other in a manner that is going to be harmful long term. Now, kids bicker. That's what they do. They bicker. They have little disputes and stuff like that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about allowing your child to be so angry with their sibling that they're carrying that anger over a period of time. No, that cannot be allowed. We need to unbreak these families. We need to bring these families back together. We need to make sure that these families are together because you know what united we are strong families lineages we are strong united but apart when they separate us we will fail we will and i don't know what i was reading talk about all types of dyslexia coming in her tiktok is love self-healing i said love yourself <laughs> that is not on the paper uh marcus uh, tell me your thoughts on it um I don't, I don't, I, I'm going to have to disagree with her. Um, however, sibling love didn't have to be taught in our house. It was already ride or die. Like, mm -hmm. me and my sister, because we are much closer in age than me and my brother. It's 10-year age difference between me and my brother. Me and my sister is three and a half, four years. Um, me and her, we could go at it like cats and dogs, but she ain't about to let nobody say nothing about me or touch me and vice versa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um... As children, yeah, I, I agree. As children, like, you know, kids ain't got no reason to hold no grudge with nobody. Uh, to hold no grudge with nobody or anything um, for a long period of time. But when adults become adults, they're adults. That's grown folk. I, now my siblings are perfectly fine. Angel siblings are perfectly fine. But I know some people that are absolutely trash. And if I was their sibling, I'd be like, you trash. Mm -hmm. I can't deal with you. Mm -hmm. Like you know, you can't you can't control what other people do. I'm if my if I had a brother, if my brother or sister was that toxic of a person, I would have to let them know how I feel. And if it's too bad, I'm just not gonna deal with them mm -hmm. because it's no longer oh mama, mommy and daddy, you know, l overlooking us and making sure we don't you know making sure we getting along, make sure we supporting each other. But if this fool is a criminal or doing yeah. <laughs> whatever else, it's like no, I'm not gonna be a part of that. Right. It ain't right. got nothing to do with being, you know, black families, white families, purple families. It's like that has nothing to do with family. That's just some people are bad people. Mm -hmm. I know people that have like, how was this? How did y'all grow up in the same household? Y'all yeah. are two completely different people. You got it together. You a good person. You a good soul to be around. You got beautiful energy. That asshole over there? <laughs> like, send them to God. Just go ahead and let them be just because they are that bad of a person. Um, and, you know, why would you 
if that person, if the better person can't help the toxic person, then why would you taint the better person with yeah. the toxic person's presence? Yeah. Um. So yeah, it could look like look, look be looked at as two different ways. But as far as children, yeah, I get it. I'll let you know y'all our twins, all of our they bicker and stuff. Even with Amar, Amar and little Marcus go at it. Mm-hmm. You would think they was the same age, the way they be annoying each other. So funny. Uh, but that's just what happens. As kids. That's what you do. You bicker. Me and my uh, brother and sister, we still bicker every now and then. But yeah, yeah. As adults, as us as adults, as one of my siblings was that toxic and bad of a person. Nah, I ain't dealing with you. You know, I uh, I I agree with you, Tank. I, there are parts of what she said that I wholeheartedly agree with. Mm-hmm. I do think it is our responsibility as their parents to teach them what it means to be siblings and to teach them the value that they have as siblings. Like, yeah, we had little Marcus and we were happy with how he turned out. Absolutely. I eventually selfishly wanted more kids, but also Marcus, one of the things he voiced was, yeah, I want to have more kids because if anything happens to us, I don't want little Marcus to be alone. alone. Yeah. So, there is the thought of when you have children, they do have each other. They have this commonality of having to be raised under our roof and having similar experiences that they just won't have with anybody else. Right. Um, they got to deal with me being crazy. It's like, yeah, daddy, his ass was crazy. Yes. They, you know what I'm saying? They, they got they that. All, <laughs> and then even with the, the twins, like probably – I, I probably am on Marcus and in the twin or the twins for two different reasons when it comes to being siblings. Like little Marcus, he has the task that me nor Tank ever had of being the oldest sibling. Mm-hmm. And so I stay on his head about, let me tell you what you're not ever going to allow to happen. You're never going to allow someone to pick on or bully your brothers, brothers while you are in the presence of them. Yeah. I don't care who they are, adult child you correct them yeah. and then you and let we, us know and we will come we will bring we'll we'll make sure everything is dealt with yeah and we Whatever. tell the twins the same thing same we've thing. had to get on the twins if he in trouble you, you in, in trouble. trouble we are very much so especially with the twins i'm like y'all can't get no closer y'all both were in my stomach at the same time y'all were born out of my body on the same day so i don't care who you think your best friend is they ain't going to get no closer Right. Than this boy that you were born with. And the twins are very different people. So we allow that and they are allowed to have, you know, different yeah. friends and things of that nature. But I let them know, I don't care if your best friend think they crafty, your quote unquote best friend think they crafty and think they can take a dig at your brother. You shut that down immediately. Yeah, all the way down. All the way. So already like with them going to the same school next year there's already excitement for them because they do have a tight bond even though their age difference is like little marcus and the twins there's a five-year age difference little marcus is excited to have his brothers on campus that he can go check on the twins are excited to have the protection of their older brother however comma to piggyback on what you said um and also to piggyback on what she said it does start with being in the home and making sure toxic behaviors are checked. Cause we got to realize there are people who have been molested by their siblings. There are people who have been bullied by their siblings. So you can't expect for them when they become adults to be like, I want to be your best friend because we have the same blood in us. No, I have have siblings that I'll probably never talk to. I'm good with that. Where the, the women that were birthed from my mother, I will always hold them close. And we all operate differently. We wax and wane. My oldest sister just had a very different experience with me in life because she was basically out of the house by the time I was mm-hmm. born. She was only in the house with me for a very short period of time. So our friendship is something that we have to be intentional about because we grew up very differently. Um However, I will always have her I will always have her back because I can I am old enough to be aware of how different her life was than mine. So while I might expect something different from my sister Melissa, who we grew up in the same household together, mm-hmm. we were together all of our life. I I don't expect the same things from my eldest sister because I I understand the age gap and I understand her life has been substantially more difficult than mine. 
So there are things that like if she's not like wanting to do something or not available to me as much or even vice versa, I don't chalk that up to, well, that's not she we're we're not like close. No, I ride for my sister, Jackie, period. Mm -hmm. The relationship looks different than it does with Melissa, but that's my sister and ain't nothing going to change that. Um, and same thing with my uh, sister, Daisy. We had to get closer as we got older. Daisy was out here in the streets wilding when I was growing up. <laughs> I was young. I was not about to be in them streets with her. So as adults and when she became more grounded and her relationship with Christ got stronger, I was able to <laughs> be. Um, it's all them people that have been out there. It's like, all right, Christ, they get. I'm here now. Come on. That's how you know. Here, sew your hip to mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know. Because I've been over there for a minute. <laughs> Hello? Uh, as she got more grounded in, in Christ and as her relationship even more uh, like developed outside of that, we, uh, um, from that, excuse me, we were able to be closer because we were able to have different types of conversations that wouldn't we didn't have access to when I was younger and she was also younger. So I get what she's saying, but I do think if the foundation is not set when they are young and if siblings aren't making certain choices right. that are healthy, you can't force two right. adults who are walking very different lives to be like, well, because yeah. we siblings. Yeah, And even with that, again, some people just don't want to do right. Come on. Come on. You know, that, that definitely helps, you know, earlier in the, as children and uh, letting, you know, them understand that, yeah, this is your sibling, this is your family, this is your blood. But again, at adulthood, I know I got some cousins right now. I'm like, I don't know how y'all deal with y'all's brother. Come on. He would be excommunicado if it was me. <laughs> he's already excommunicado when he's my cousin. I don't deal with him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Marcus is serious about that. What I'm serious about is saving money. OK, today's episode is sponsored by PayPal, honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. OK, but did you know that it only takes a couple seconds to get to get it? I mean, truly a couple of seconds. It means if you go and add it to your laptop or iPhone right now while I'm doing this ad, it'll be done before the ad read is even over. I love being able to do things quickly. That's a part of how my brain works. I'm always looking for the most efficient way to get something done. So like things that are taking, even if it's only five minutes longer, it irritates me because I already came up with a more efficient way. So this is why I love Honey because they make it fast to get and they also make it easy and fast for you to save money. Um, and Honey's uh, deal finding abilities work faster than anything else I could ever find. Honey is the fast shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best ones it finds to your card. Imagine you're shopping at one of your favorite sites, right? You're like, oh, I'm about to get this girl. I'm about to be fired this summer. And when you check out, the Honey button appears, and all you have to do is click add coupon coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey scour or searches for coupons it finds for that site. If Honey work finds a working coupon, you'll watch the uh, prices drop. I recently did this, and I want to say it was two weeks ago, and I'm trying to remember what the heck I was buying. I would not have even thought this website had coupons. That's how, like, I wasn't even in the mindset. And thankfully, Honey, being that it's already on my laptop and on my web browser, it, like, popped over into the screen. It what was it like, it did, like, it popped, right? It just, like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, boom. It was, like, doing a hip-hop move. And it was like, ho, 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 girl, let's see. We got some coupons. I think we got some coupons. And it did. I think I sold, saved 20%. I wish I could remember what it was. It might have been some, like, gadget or gizmo or something. Y'all know I'd be liking to buy money, uh, spend money on some crazy things. Uh, but it was so quick. Saved 20%. Ended up being, like, uh, I think I, I think it was over $100. So I, I saved, like, $20 on this purchase. $20 is a lot. That adds up after a while. It was super easy to use, and I recommend everyone has it. Honey doesn't just work on desktop. It works on your iPhone, too. Just activate it on Safari on your phone and save, uh, save on the go. Getting Honey seriously only takes a few seconds, and by getting it, you're doing yourself a solid and supporting the show. Get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash argue. Argue. That's joinhoney.com slash argue. Argue. All right, let's jump into the next segment. Why don't we? So this next segment is tank it or leave it. I think I'll take it. I think I'll take it. This is what we're going to find out. Marcus, 
Do you take it or tank it? Parents should not interfere with their child's choice of friends. Take it or tank it. Um, they should not interfere. Mm, so you are going no, to no, take no, it. No, I'm, I'm, I'm getting it right. They, parents should not interfere with their child's choice of friends. Choice of friends. Are you affirming it, which is taking uh, yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, just tell me. No, shut before up. I forget, shut up. No. No, I'm about to slap you. <laughs> um, I am going to. It's it depends. I think it depends on the age. Mm-hmm. I am going to take it. No, tank it. I'm gonna tank it. Okay, so I think it depends on the age, though. Uh huh. Because uh, you know, the twins' age and younger, a lot of times kids don't know that they are getting into some stuff with a the person. They don't realize it. They, they don't have that. Um, affirming thing in their mind to say this person is not good for me Uh uh-huh you know once you get older even little marcus's age you know mid-teens this is like now you know you shouldn't be around this person right but you're gonna have to learn some lessons yourself Mm -hmm. it all depends on the age when you say child until them foods is out of my house that's those are my kids i'm gonna guide them yeah um so it's kind of i can't pick one side or the other because with me it depends on the age I say, tank it. I don't care what age. I'm going to tell you about your friend. I'm a, especially young age. Listen, I have full, dang near full control over who the twins are friends with. Actually, I don't have any control over who Amar has friends with, but I have control over how much time he gets to spend with them outside of the household. I have, we have a hundred percent control over that. Um, And to what you said, like, if I can notice certain behaviors that my child is demonstrating that are new and I can attribute it to a friend. Mm-hmm. And it, if, if it's really undesirable behaviors, that friendship is about to be over. Little Marcus has a friend that we aren't that excited about, right? We did not kill that relationship. Mm-hmm. We didn't kill it as much as we wanted to because it is a friendship that he truly yeah. Truly, truly saw as valuable. Yeah, but we've let him know how we feel about that relationship and that person and why. Right. But at the end of the day, the reason why I wasn't like, no, y'all ain't no longer friends. I don't want to hear you talking to this person no more. Blah, 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 blah. Is that um, the behaviors that my son was demonstrating that I felt like were a reflection of that friendship were ones that we were able to curtail on our side. So there was like uh, an instance that happened that was the idea of this friend and got my child and ended up getting my child in huge trouble with us. He could have gotten in trouble with other people, but we, mm-hmm. we uh, caught it early enough, caught it early enough. Right. And it was, I mean, he got in trouble for a very long time, right? And that friend kept trying to come at, to his aid, and I had to tell that friend, basically stay out of grown folks' business. Um, but I have noticed how my son is now gaining the agency and the autonomy of understanding even if your friend is doing something, mm-hmm. you need to use your judgment. Right. And not do it because I have to know my son knows how to withstand certain peer pressure. Like if I only create an environment that good choices are easy to make in, when that environment is removed from him when he gets older, he might fold like a goddamn on card table. So uh, if I thought that he wasn't able to make good decisions in that person's presence or around them, that friendship would be OVA. But um, he's gotten he's gotten better at it. And um, I, I've noticed that I don't feel like that. Uh, and I've also, because I go through Lil Marcus' Marcus's text messages, and he knows that I do. It's been a while. And I've seen certain text message conversations where I've heard him standing his ground, correcting that friend. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, okay, okay. Yeah. I see what it is. And, and and not just with that friend, with other friends that don't like that friend. He stood their ground with them. Yeah. And been like, your issue with that person is not 
has not does not have to do with me. Y'all got to figure this that is out. Angel's child to a T. <laughs> <laughs> you hear me? <laughs> this is Angel. Angel got a few select friends. It's just like, why are you friends? Don't talk about that person. And if that person, don't talk about them. Keep that person away from all of us. It's like Angel got them. <laughs> I very much so. Like, Woo, you can have got, an issue with them. Her it siblings, my, her mama, they all be like, I don't know. <laughs> and I be like, and that's your business. And I don't need your business uh, over here. You can, have, you can discuss that with somebody else, but it ain't going to be with me. Crazy ass people. You ain't gonna talk about my friend <laughs> to me. Talk about it to someone else. Y'all handle that. Uh, then when the so, doors close, she'd be like, "Yeah, they right though." Cause they're food. Nah, <laughs> no. Nah, I listen. She I, recognizes the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm not like no, but you just have to see yeah. the goodness. Nah. I don't do that. Listen. And it's like no, it's on fire. We gonna let it burn and we gonna put it out. <laughs> Y'all, I don't need y'all's help. Okay, I know how to put this fire out right here. No, it's just I allow people to have their feelings about whoever they want to, but I get to protect what I uh, what you're going to bring to me. You, everybody I deal with it as an adult, so you got a problem with them, you could take it to them, right? Um, or or comma, I will allow you if you have to to vent to me and be like, this is how I feel. And I'll be like, you're valid in your feelings. That does not change my feelings towards that person. Mm -hmm. You are valid in your feelings and how you feel in your experience. And I feel sorry that that's how you're experiencing this person. That is not what I'm experiencing with this person. So if hopefully y'all can resolve it, but it's not, it's not my, it's not my job to resolve it for you all at all. And you did that to me. You said stay out of people's business. I did. Because, listen, Angel wants to be Mrs. Fix and be she like, do. listen, guys, let's talk because I yeah. see both sides. No? And we, we got to redo it. That sketch that she did to me about going to game night, it was like, you can be, you can be nice, you can be smile. I got to be like, Angel. You can shut the fuck up and not be in their business. <laughs> all right? That ain't none of your business, okay? I'm done really good. You just mind I be, your I, business. I, I, listen, I do good. I'm better at, at, at being at not being in folks' business than you are at being friendly. Is that not true? Lies. <gasps> Marcus. Lies. Do, I've been friendly. I be out of folks' business. I like, be friendly. But look, really, think about. So much about, where people invite me to stuff. I be friendly. Listen, people don't understand that when you're being an asshole, they just think it's funny. They're like, ha, ha, ha. they don't know he is dead serious. As long as they feel welcome, that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand what the problem is. <laughs> I make people feel welcome. You do, babe. I'm not going right. to take it from you. Yeah. But uh, give me my prize. Moving on. Uh, give me my prize. You pride. be out of people's business. Yes, finally. We here. Don't do it. See, you see that backhanded ass compliment? You right. You right. I, it give, was me the real, give me the real compliment. You be out of people's business. You be deep up out of people's Thank business you. now. You, you see what he does? <laughs> you see that now? You can't even help yourself. I didn't yourself. say now. Yes. I didn't do now. I was like. Victory. Moving on, Victory. I know Victory's probably asleep. Did he not end with now? Thank you. I Hold on. No, he said it out it loud. Uh, Patreon. Did he not say now hey, at the you very You be out end? of people's business. No, I have to pause for three hours before she ends the, the my statement. Wait until Patreon comes up it's on Angel, It's Angel's feelings. What do you mean? You are putting the now on me. I'm not no, doing it. the last. I, what did Dr. D say? I, you cannot say what that person is feeling. I didn't, I'm not saying what you feel. You did. No. Look, Hannah said yes. No, Listen, no. I'll take the it best wife said no. Hannah said yes. Hold on. Don't hold nobody on. pay no attention to Hannah. He did. Hey, y'all can kiss my ass. Because you know we can rewind. It's right here. <laughs> you said it. You said you be they out. They just going to agree with you regardless. Here we go. Because you're not going to play me. Whack asses. Y'all over here lying for you her. Not, you're not going to play me. No. Hold on. Moving on. Give me my prize. Moving on. Uh, give me my prize. You be out of people's business. Yes, finally. We here. Don't do it. See, you see that backhanded ass compliment? You right. You right. I will back the real. Give me the real you compliment. You be out of people's business. You be deep
<laughs> oh, I ain't hear that. <laughs> no, now it's now. It's like you because at one point you wasn't. I know. I just wanted. I didn't say finally. I said you be out of peace. Just like I'm did, friendly now. Did I? Did I not say? I said you said now. But you can't. You, that now was not a. It now. felt like it. Regardless, I'm saying what I said. What you said? You said you didn't say. It. But you were saying now as if I was like finally was a now. No, I said you said now is what I said. This is a point. Moving on. Moving on. I proved my point. Okay, anyways. So, main topic. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> He's just going to be a jackass. Okay, main topic. Uh, here we go. So, sibling saga. What dynamics did we face with our siblings or friends in childhood that mirror how our boys relate to one another? With siblings? What? Oh my God, we went over this in the car. We did. It was loud in the car. You had the sunroof open. And the I read it a, a second time. What dynamics did we face with our siblings or friends in childhood that mirror how our boys relate to one another? Um, there was one. So Marcus, again, he's ten years older than Amar, but he's closer in age with the twins. But we know, look, assholes, we already heard it. Y'all ain't got to <laughs> no, keep. They, uh, Marcus, this is delayed for them. Don't be mad. No, it ain't. It's up to speed. <laughs> you ain't going to talk about our Patreon. <laughs> you going to feel the heat just like they be tagging my head, too. Anyway, uh, y'all was taking now out of context. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, you did, too. You took it out of context. Okay, babe, go. Anyway, so we noticed earlier in uh, when they started, you know, once the twins started getting mobile, mobile and – uh, you know, dealing with little Marcus and stuff, he had a closer relationship with Sai than he did at Kai. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes we even noticed that they would like kind of team up on him a little bit, and we like nip that in the bud real quick. We set him down like, "Hey, this is what ain't about to happen." And uh, what the way that was that that kind of mirrored what I went through with my older brother because. Granted, he didn't like pick on me or anything, but me and my brother really didn't have. I felt like the protection from him, mm -hmm. but I didn't really have. We didn't have like a real close relationship till hell. I was in my twenties, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because of our distance, and then he went to the navy. Uh, when he, I was in middle school. No, I was in elementary school when he went to the navy. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know he was in the navy, then came back. So it was never like uh. Me always wanting to hang out with him, him never allowing it until I was, you know, approaching. Actually, I was in my 20s by the time it happened. Mm -hmm. um, so that was one instance where it was just like, no, I get, I see the the thing of you not wanting to be around your younger sibling, maybe. Mm -hmm. I am the younger sibling, brother and sister. But I understand it because I've seen it. Um, I didn't really get it with my sister, but I definitely got it from a brother. But, uh, yeah, so that was one thing where I'm like, I'm not, I'm not about to let this. Yeah. I'm not about to let this happen because I know what that feels like. One of the big dynamic things that I see is with Kai and little Marcus. Kai adores his big brother. He would love to emulate him. He would love to just spend time with him. And um, I think about that with my sister, Melissa. Melissa was only four years uh, older than me, so we rarely ever experienced school at the same time. Uh, only in elementary school after that, she would be graduating in the year after she would graduate, I would enter into whatever like yeah. school, whether it be middle school, high school or what, or college. And, um, I loved being around my sister and her friends. I loved just being in the room with them and feeling cool. Right. And them knowing my name. And Kai is that boy. He wants, I remember when we took them camping and Marcus was there with two other kids, his age, three other boys his age. Mm -hmm. So they're doing like jokes that are slightly above uh, Kai's head and I'm sure probably inappropriate. And um, Kai is trying to like pretend like he understand, laughing like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And one of the boys caught it was like, what are you laughing about, Kai? And Kai was just like... <laughs> You know, <laughs> he was, hey guys, it's good time. <laughs> he was so, so like loving every moment of just being able to be around Marcus and these older boys. Mm -hmm. And then even watching him on the last day of school. And um, Kai is a popular kid. 
I was watching him as we were trying to take the last day of school picture with him and these uh, other kids. And they're like wrapping their arm around Kai. Kai is just like cheesing, laughing. And I was like, oh, Kai is him. <laughs> He's him a thief. Like he is that dude. So like there's this, there's this, I guess, confidence that he gets being able to be around his older brother and be in his space. Cause he will ask Marcus to play a game with him all the time. Mm -hmm. He will like, beg for that time and Lil Marcus will concede but I think that being able to be in the space with his big brother gives him confidence when he's in the space with his peers and that was me and Melissa like when one of the, it was very difficult for me when um we moved to Lexington Melissa stayed in Louisville to finish out school there so she wasn't with me in my middle school years so my middle school years which would have already been difficult were definitely more difficult because I did I, my big sister felt so far away mm -hmm. and my two older sisters they were living their own life Daisy was in Florida Jackie by that time was in Baltimore so I didn't have that like uh, I don't have my big sibling like you you and Sonya kind of the same yeah. space or whatever so it wasn't until Melissa came back to Lexington to came to Lexington to go to UK that I started to get that feeling again. So in high school, Angel, be, I, that's when I became popular. Mm -hmm. I I had the confidence because I'm like I'm able to kick it with college students. Yeah. So you high schoolers, <laughs> y'all can't tell me nothing. And I, so um, I I think it's so sweet. And I'm just and my sister never abused that relationship with me. She never made me feel like the corny little sister that she had to mm -hmm. hang out with, even if she felt that way. Went right over my head, if that's mm -hmm. the case. <laughs> so I've tried to make sure little Marcus doesn't abuse that because my older sister, Melissa, now has somebody that she knows will rap for it. Like, right. girl, what what is it? As I say to Quinn, but the same thing with my sister. Where you go, I go. Yeah. So that's uh, one of the things. Is there any other that you see? Um, It was, let me see. It was never like because once I once me and my brother got once he got to the point to where he, he didn't mind me being around or actually wanted me around. Once we got to that point, it was like, yeah, see what you've been missing out on. Yeah, like, <laughs> like I'm cool and I'm a good time. Uh -huh. I noticed like now, like when once we did start, he would announce me. It was like a pride in his. He was like, yeah, this is my baby brother right here. That's how you introduce. This is my baby brother right here. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Like, oh, he'll just go around the room or outside or wherever. He's like, always been in the motorcycles and stuff, so it was always some type of club or gang. Yeah. Uh, literally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was always like a pride thing. Yeah. Um, but it's it's what's different with uh, well, this is not the same. It's different with Kai, not Kai. With uh, what's that boy's name? Marcus, Amara, and Marcus of how close they are already. Yeah, which you know didn't have that. Uh huh. Yeah, and they're ten years apart. You and your brother were eleven. Yeah. Ten. You oh ten both yeah, of y'all ten. ten. Yeah. I wonder why that is. I think probably your brother was probably way more independent than little Marcus. Probably able to like get out yeah, of the house no, that more. Boy was yeah. He was he's independent. I think from the age of six. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just out doing his thing. Mm -hmm. Um, it was a lot. I mean, I know they had two different upbringings. Like Jackie, we was talking about how our older siblings is like they they're the loners. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's like they go off and disappear. Right. And you know, have you talked to someone? Have you talked to your brother? Like, yeah. I mean, I've talked to him. Um, mm -hmm. out of even my cousins now, it's just like he just be. Gone off. Like, ain't nobody talked to him. I'm like, I talk, he calls me, I talk to him, but mm. <laughs> don't nobody else hear from him. I would, I, w one thing I will say, I don't remember it, but I know my sister Jackie probably remembers it. Like, my sister Jackie takes pride in giving me my middle name, right? Mm. So she, um, I feel like she considered me, like, to be her baby when I was first born, even though I don't, yeah. I can't recollect that. And I know anytime I'm with her, like, she loves me almost in a maternal way, like, because I've always been her baby sister, even though during certain parts of her life, we definitely were not around each other. Um, and I do see that with little Marcus. Little Marcus will baby Amar, even though Amar yeah. will piss him off. When Amar is too heavy for me to carry or I have on heels, um, 
Lil Marcus would be like, come here, Amar, and pick him up and carry him. I've literally heard Marcus threaten Amar oh, yeah. to his face. He was like, I'm going to punch you in your head. And I laughed so hard because I know Amar is pissing him off. I can hear Amar. He's pissing me off, and he's yeah. not even dealing with me. <laughs> but at the same time, Little Marcus still loves on Amar like mm -hmm. he's his baby. Um, and I, even though I am a grown woman, I can still see that type of relationship with not just Jackie, but also my sister, yeah. Daisy, um, that little Marcus I'm getting to see. Now, Amar probably won't remember this. Yeah. That's the thing. I see their difference, and it's literally the same age difference between me and my brother. He's His birthday is December 21st, mine is January 27th. Yeah. And to to see that little Marcus and Amar in this, I'm like, we that far apart? Mm-hmm. Like, I was 13. He was 23. Yeah. He's out here just getting ass. And I'm like, hey, what, what we going to do? We going to go to <laughs> laser tag? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I've kept, I keep putting it on little Marcus. I'm like, when your brother turns 13, no, you're going to have to check all the way in. You're going to be taking him places. <laughs> Understand that. I understand you'll be a grown man trying to make your life. No, you're checking in for yeah. this one. Okay, so we're going to move to our last two segments because Let Us Tell It will be filming right after this live. So, uh, Patreon, be on the lookout for that link. We are going to do Tank Our Advice. Hey, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then, um, what is it called? Our Audience Question of the Week. And for Tank Our Advice, let's see here. Ooh, this is a good one because we both can answer this. This is from Kalia Pikes. Mm -hmm. She says, uh, do we have advice for a younger sibling trying to build a relationship with her older sister? Or um, our mom is getting older with health problems and I don't want to fight when the inevitable happens. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, I think a lot of times... When there is, when you don't understand, I, we're both the younger mm -hmm. other, and when you don't understand what the distance is between your older sibling and you, as far as in why there's not a closeness, um, sometimes it just takes the question. And I'm not sure if y'all just had a falling out or something, yeah. but if you don't know, because there will sometimes be distance between me and my older sister. Yeah. And I, I'll be like, I have no idea what's going on. Now, me and her don't talk every day, so I'm not going to sit here and be like, why don't you call me all the time? Because I don't either. But there are certain times where I can feel like yeah. something, something's something, happening. Something, something's afoot. Something is. Um, and in those instances, sometimes I'll give her space or sometimes I'll just send a text message. And um, I think... For me, building that building a stronger relationship is just, you know, I try to include, I try to make sure she's aware of. Now I have to usually let her know last because my sister Jackie know how to, she know how to tell people my business, and I'll be like, no, this is just for you, <laughs> this yeah. ain't for other people. But she be excited. She, she That's find, the only she reason find why. Find out right before Patreon. Yeah, she be excited, <laughs> so it's not like she's trying to ruin yeah. anything. But I know how excited she gets for me, so I just and be she like, like to talk. I'd be like, I'm going to tell you right before it happens. Um, I try to include her in important things in my life mm -hmm. so that she can know that her presence is wanted. So, uh, you know, whether it be a birthday party, whether it be an event that I'm doing, I try to make sure she's aware. Or like, you know, when my Mama Likes box came out, I named the lipstick color after her daughter, my niece who recently passed away because her favorite color was red like mine is. So I made sure I sent her the the whole box. She didn't have to buy it. Just letting her know that she is someone special to me, I feel like, is baby steps. I'm not going to try to force a relationship that's not organic for us. Me and Jackie are very in very different stages in life, but we also have things that we benefit. She is hilarious to me. She's super funny. <laughs> so I do enjoy talking to her, and she does have a lot of things that I can learn from her in life. Um, and I'm super proud of her. So also making sure she knows that, like, I'm so proud of all the things that mm -hmm. she's done in life. I'm so proud of how she's handling her grandchildren. Um, so I think including them so that they know that they are someone special to you, um, and making sure you articulate your actual feelings about them yeah. 
to ho- hopefully if there's like a tough exterior that breaks down, you got. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, um, yeah, just letting them know or reaching out to them. I don't know if y'all you know talk all the time or not. Um, like I, one thing I noticed with my brother, sometimes like it'll be long periods of time where we like like just like with Andrew, I don't be calling him all the time, but I'll go a long time without hearing from him, and then. For like a week or two, he'll call me like three or four times and we'll talk for 20, 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. And it's always like a shot, like, the hell, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. what's going on? About nothing. Um, but when I hit those um, periods of not hearing from him, I like, like, I plan on reaching out to him sometime this week, like, what's going on, you know? And just knowing his personality and knowing that, I know he'll tell me something if something is going on or just um, relighting that fire of, yeah, you need to. You need to be heard more. Like, mm-hmm. we need to hear from you. Um, yeah, it's, it, like I said, I don't know y'all's dynamic or anything, but just, yeah, letting that person know. You can all, all you can do is let them know your intentions of wanting to build a closer relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, last thing I'll add, and then we'll close up with our, uh, our comment of the week, is one thing specifically what I do with my oldest sister is how I love on her grandchildren is one way for her to know how much I love her. Like, uh, she has some grandchildren that I we get to see once every lunar eclipse. When I saw them, because uh, her great Aunt Angel had some change, I dropped some dollars on them babies. I went and got them clothes and stuff that they liked. Same thing with when her other grandkids came out here. I wanted to make sure they had little things to make them feel special, appreciated. When um, Malachi had his birthday, his request was to give him a shout out on Instagram. I was like, well, a shout out you will get. OK, so also making sure that I, she knows the things that are important to her. Are important to me. OK, so uh, this is the audience question from our podcast episode. We comment. comment thank you. Thank you. Uh, from We Damn. Sold Out, <laughs> our previous episode. This was from O Real E, and I think this is Erica Alexander, not the actress. Um, it was no, a. Eric, this comes up as Erica Alexander, I think. Okay, well, then it's maybe not. It could be, I don't know. Okay, no, it is Erica. I'm <laughs> positive of it. She says it was a great event, uh, and the drive to and from Arizona was well mm-hmm. worth it. I so appreciate you plugging my financial wellness event, too. Uh, We'll likely have a wait list, which means there might be another session later this year. Mind blown emoji. Um, Thank you, Erica. Your sacrifice to drive to see us is not one that we take lightly, girl. Our mind was blown. So thank you. Thank you for your comment. Again, if you engage with our content, either on Instagram or YouTube or even TikTok, we might read your comment for comment of the week. So Mm -hmm. please engage with us. Make sure that you are rating review us on um, Apple podcast. Wherever you're listening to us, subscribe to That Chick Angel TV so you can watch the podcast as well as other content. Subscribe to Tanksley TV. You go ahead and give the rest of your. Oh, uh, y'all can find me on Instagram at Marcus Hair on the Gram, Facebook at Marcus Hair on the Book, TikTok at Tank Don't Talk. Beard and Body Butter called Man Shit and go to M A N S H Y T dot com. Check that out, scented and unscented. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for these tour dates that we got coming up. Um, the Patreon is the only one that's about yeah. to find out. Everybody else is going to have to wait until next week. Absolutely. You can follow me at That's Your Angel across all platforms. Follow Mama Likes TV on um, Instagram, which is at Mama Likes 127. Sorry, that's on YouTube. And then on, um, excuse me, on Instagram, you can follow Mama, uh, Shop Mama Likes and Mommy Confessions Show on Instagram. Uh, yeah, get products at shopmamalikes.com. Stream my platinum salad. I'm speaking it in advance. Song, um, margarita song on all streaming platforms. And I think that's it. We'll talk to y'all next week. Hopefully, yeah, I'll be at Essence. Bye.